I gotta make sure nobody saw me, man. Hurry up, let's do this quick. Hey, man, here we go, NAM Day 3. And you can tell I got my NAM Day 3 voice on right now, but it's not gonna stop. We about to go and search for the best in audio interfaces and software today. So come on with me, put your big boy shoes on, and we out of here, man. Come on, let's go find some interfaces. Yeah, so we are finding the best in audio interfaces for NAM 2024, and I am here at the Fluid Audio exhibit with... Kevin Zaccaro, owner of Fluid Audio. Okay, Kevin. Yo, can you tell us a little bit about the Fluid Audio interface? Sure. It's called our SRI2. It's a two-in, two-out recording interface. Um, so mic pre's on the front, and there's two sets of uh, outs on the back. So you can plug in two sets of uh, monitors. Because we're a monitor company, you can you can switch between toggle between two monitors, audition hours versus others. But beyond that, 48 volt um, summing switch. Um, you know, all the things that you would need to, for recording. It's crystal clear recordings, great for the home home guy that's with his guitar and recording. But uh, SRI 2, it's been out, I guess, two or uh, three or four years now. I love that this interface has um, the ability to have multiple sets of monitors. So it's built in monitor controller. Like, it's really dope. And I feel like that's missing uh, for a lot of interfaces at this price point. I, I heard it was, it was pretty affordable. What, what is the price again? 199 that's dope. Yeah, and what's cool is we made the front angled, you know, so that you can easily get to the controls. A lot of them are, are like the extrusion style where all the controls are on the end. So you have to go down to your, and, and it's not, not that convenient, you know. So this is a, a cool way to do it. And it's in, in, a, in an affordable package. And, it, and, and it's all aluminum, aluminum housing, aluminum. Uh, sorry if that was too loud, but uh, no, <laughs> it's bulletproof. It's really a beefy piece for for the money. So, wow, that's dope. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for coming. All right, So now we are at the Craneborn Audio Exhibit, and I have my friend Matt. <laughs> Matt is gonna show us something hot in audio interfaces. Now look, I'm already hip, but you need to be hip on this. Yo, Matt, go ahead and show us what you got. Cool. So uh, this is our 500 R8. It's an 8 slot 500 series rack, but this version has an inbuilt interface, so you can just go straight USB from your PC into here, get 8 channels of uh, 500 series, and then with expansion, you can rack, uh, hook up one of our ADATs, get another 8 or any other interface, any other outboard gear to hook up. Nice. So for those of y'all that's not familiar with the 500 series, it basically allows you to have analog processing um, that you can basically get like the ma the main part of each module. So you like little small analog processors. But the dope thing is you don't have to worry about taking a bunch of cables out of here and doing a bunch of complex routing because it's already built into the interface. Yeah. So uh, I mean, it's plug and play with whatever you want. If you're doing tracking, you can get eight mic pre's in there, or take those all out, throw some compressors, EQs, whatever you want. It, there's and I, I can really see this being super useful for like mixing using the, the 500 series because again, it's already through the interface. Now, do you still have to like calculate for any uh, latency that you might get by using these um, uh, analog modules or does this interface kind of have some system built in for that? Yeah, so uh, there'd be no issue with the modules themselves. It'd just be what, whatever the uh, interface is running at. That's dope, man. All right, y'all. Here we are finding some new hotness over at the RME exhibit at NAMM 2024. And right now we have Jeff Peterson. And he's going to show us what's new in interfaces at RME. Jeff? Thanks. So I'm Jeff from RME. Uh, we are here at NAMM 2024, and we've got nothing new hardware-wise. But what we do have is a huge firmware update to all the current Fireface UFX and UCX models. So with this uh, new firmware and software update for Total Mix, we're now adding a nine band parametric EQ and cross feed and configurable delays for the uh, Total Mix app, which is gonna allow you to integrate this a lot easier into your immersive audio mixing. So the idea here is we've got a panel we can open up. We just push on the room EQ button here in the bottom row, that's gonna open up this panel. I'll get a left and a right I can work on independently, and I can adjust the 
PEQs to in order to correct for the room. I can adjust the delays in order to correct for the latency of the speakers. And now we can build a really great sweet spot for mixing that Atmos mix. Nice. Can you talk a little bit more about the crossfeed? Uh, uh? Yeah, so crossfeed is a great feature. When you're mixing on Atmos, from what we're hearing is everybody starts on headphones. And when you're mixing on headphones, you will need crossfeed in order to help you stay at it longer without getting fatigued. What a crossfeed will do is it takes a little bit of the signal from the right ear and puts it into the left ear on your headphone and some from the left ear onto the right ear. So that crossfeed is available in five different levels going from extremely subtle to very noticeable. But what it will help you do is perceptually locate that sound better inside your head when you're dealing with two closed sources. You're not hearing the sound bouncing around the room like you would with speakers. Also be used for the crossfeed could also be used for stereo mixing as well, right? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. The crossfeed can come in handy in a lot of different scenarios. Yo, that's awesome, man. I, I think I'm sold on, on my next audio interface, man. All right, y'all. So we are still finding some of the hottest software at NAM, and we just ran into Tracy. Tracy, what's the name of the company you with? I am with a THE company, Thomas Hilby Equipment. The company. <laughs> Yo, all right, so Tracy, show us what you're exhibiting today. All right, what we have is um, some plugins that are modeled after hardware 500 series. And it's uh, from board from the 60s, it's Motown era. So you've got a vintage sound, you've got um, you know good fatness and good tone. So we have this MO5 on the vocal track. And if we play it, I'll play it without the plug-in first. Love should take your breath away. With you, I get lost for days. I can't find the words to say. And we'll pop it in now. Your breath away. With you, I get lost for days. I can't find the words to say. Now, y'all can't necessarily hear that. Maybe, maybe you can, but it definitely increases the fatness. It brings up the gain in a nice analog sounding way. Yeah, yeah, it's really nice. Uh, what about the fat? What, what's the fat, boy? The fat is just a saturation channel, but it's on the bass. But it's really hard to hear in here. Uh, you can't really tell the difference, unfortunately. But So we will turn it off. And you can't, I don't know if it's the speakers or uh, just doesn't. For my ears, anyway, it doesn't. Yeah, we need, probably need a sub or something to, to really fill that low end saturation. Yeah, the MO5 does a nice job with the speakers. Um, okay. And what's the third? What third one you have? The third one we have here is another Mike Pre. This is the first one that he came up with. It's got a Melkor uh, op amp in it. So again, it was taken out of a '60s Motown-ish board. Uh, Melkor was pre AEI API. And let's take a listen to that one. If you're looking for a hack, apparently this company has it, man. Not only that, they got really cool pink shirts that I, that I need one of, right? We have the Music Hack exhibit here at NAMM 2024, and I'm standing here with Sam from Music Hack. All right, Sam, show us what you got, baby. Okay, we got Master Plan. It's a... Uh, you can hold it. You got this. Okay. <laughs> we got Master Plan. It's a mastering chain for everybody. We try to split the difference between these one knob or AI things where, you know, you, you don't get to pick your sound and the like really complex ones where it's like an airplane cockpit and you're lost in a, in a bunch of knobs. So it, we're just cutting through all that noise so you can just be creative with your masters and get right to the point. Um, we have one row of controls in the middle. These are the most important things you'd use for every mix, like a little bit of gentle shells for the low and the high. Um, a loudness circuit that's like a special thing. I, I'm the DSP engineer. Is it a limiter or what? What's it is, it? It's a special thing that's not quite a limiter and not quite a clipper. But the point is it's trying to get the best of both worlds with that, right? So you don't need to stack it. Uh, and then the width. No, you don't need to go like clipper, limiter, limiter, clipper, limiter. No, just pop. Uh, just master plan. Uh, and then the width is uh, mono safe. So it's face coherent. You don't get any comb filter when you bring it back together. Just ride it to where you want it to be. Then we got a bunch of tone controls at the bottom. And these things are things that are, you know, you want them for different specific types of mixes. Like if it's sounding a little thin, extra saturation. If you want to scoop out some of the low mids, it's sounding muddy. We have a clean control. 
a multi-presser and a gentle sort of like bus compressor because we have no compression on the circuit otherwise. So it's real clean otherwise. Uh, D harsher, calm, is like getting rid of those frequencies above 12,000 hertz. You just kind of like calm it down. And then a tape control. Uh, when you turn it on, you can, you can fade between two different things the tape does. Either the low end, kind of like that little head bump, and uh, the high end, the roll off. So you can, whatever. So these are like the flavor, and then this is the utility. And finally, on the right side, we've got um, an output filter. So like, not everyone's got a pair of those white cone speakers, right? So this gives it to you right here, and you can just listen to your headphones, yeah. Phone, band, mono. Yeah, and then finally, this is the most important thing. We talk about loudness all the time, but it's really important when you make a mix louder that you don't screw up the dynamics. So we've got a Unity button right here, and if you do your work with the Unity button on, it, it recompensates the gain back down, so you can make sure that the uh, loudness you add doesn't screw anything up, and then when you're done, you take it off. Okay. It's good. Is that the bottom? Are these speakers? Yes, so we've got integrated LUFs, so that's the measurement that's gonna be used by YouTube, Spotify, whatever, you can know where you're at. Uh, we've got short-term love, so I forgot the time interval, but that's like over, you know, a little bit. Uh, and then we have a peak, which if you have true peak on, we'll show two peaks, otherwise regular peaks. And then crest factor is a good one. It tells you the uh, difference between your peak and your average volume, so that you know the dynamic range of your music. The higher means it moves more, so high is good. Yeah, cool. I guess it's time to put it to the test, man. Let's do it. I'm gonna just hit the mic here. I'm gonna start off with the Unity on, because I don't want to hear any changes without just loudness. Increase the low end, okay. Okay, really subtle changes. Nothing too dramatic, even if I'm pushing this high end by three, four dB. Okay. Fire. I really like that, man. Super easy to use. It's, it's fun to use. Like, fun. Just make you want to move around and do stuff on there. I think it's something super special with that. Thank you so much. Like, we worked hard, so. I'm about to take this back home to the studio as fast as I can and get it out of Logic into Pro Tools and do some work. <laughs> Thank you. Hey, man. Here we go. I'm standing at the golfer's booth right now with my man, Eddie. Eddie is the most responsible person at NAMM. If you didn't know, you can tell by the, the hair, right? So <laughs> he's going to show us the golfer's plug-in. I've been using it. I don't even know if I'm saying the name right, but I've been using it. I don't even know if I'm using it right. Eddie, please show me the ins and outs of what's going on with this amazing plug-in. I'll do my best. I'll do my best. So the company's called Sound Theory. We've got a product called Golfos. We released the blue one in 2018. Then in 2019, we came out with a low latency version, Golfos Live. And the latest one, which is what you're seeing here, is Golfos Master. That's been maxed out in terms of quality. The noise floor is a little bit lower, and you've got finer step sizes so you can do smaller moves for mastering. What Golfos is trying to do, it's just trying to maximize the amount of information in that original unprocessed audio. So the best analogy I have is if you take like a family photo and somebody tall is blocking somebody short, Everybody's in that photo, but if you could just rearrange it so that it's more easy to see everybody, that's what Golf Oss is doing to your audio. It's making everything more clear, easier to perceive. Yeah. Nice. So can you show us like what would be a good starting point for when we're working with the uh, Golf Oss Master? Definitely. So when you first instantiate the plugin, the five parameters at the top are all zero. That's the same thing as bypass, where it won't be doing anything. But you'll want to start with these two main parameters, recover and tame. As you bring Recover and Tame up, it's going to work across the entire spectrum to resolve those frequency masking issues. If you don't want it to work in a certain region, let's say you track to tape and you know there's tape hiss in the high end, we can drag these frequency range limiters over, and now we're omitting processing on that region. We can do the same thing on the low end, and now we're just working in the mid-range. And what a lot of people don't know is that these sliders pass through one another, so we can drag them through one another, and now we're just working on the lows and the highs, and we're kind of omitting the mid-range. You'll still see activity in the mid-range. That's our perceptual loudness compensation. 
So every time you hit this bypass button, you're not going to be fooled by volume differences like a lot of other plugins where louder's better, right? Everything's perceptually the same loudness. What's cool here is that it looks like a pretty crazy curve, like we're doing some extreme moves, but we're zoomed way out. We're at plus minus 3 dB. So these are actually really small moves, which are perfect for mastering. That's amazing, man. Um, but what's the best way that you would, like, who should be using this and when? So we designed it to be pretty simple so that everyone from the beginner all the way up to the pro can use Golf Oss. Um, I recommend starting on the two bus, on the stereo bus, getting a feel for that learning curve, and then once you're comfortable there, you can go down to mono sources, a drum bus, a bass DI, and give it a play in those areas. Right on. Thanks, Eddie. I got to make sure nobody saw me, man. Hurry up. Let's do this quick. So what's going on at FL Studio? Oh, man. People are excited about our new stem separator tool, about FL Cloud, the cloud-based library built right into FL Studio, and we're always releasing innovative new features. You going you gonna to switch over or what? I don't know, man. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about it. Why, why, why should I switch over to FL? I mean, how many hit records you want to talk about that were made in FL Studio? You know, there's a reason all those guys are using it. Which one? I mean, Hip Boy, man, anything by Hip Boy, Metro Boomin, you know, those are the record producers of the year and the Grammys right now, you know? What about mixing and recording vocals? Do you, you, you recommend I do that in FL too? Sure, you can do everything in FL Studio, man, but, uh, you know, it's, we're constantly improving and listening to our users, so it's only going to get better. All right, man, I got to get out of here for somebody to see me. All right, John, are we rolling? We rocking, we rolling, we over at the Mackey exhibit, and I actually got a real friend. I know I'll be saying everybody's my friend, but you know, Rob is actually the man. We go back, way back, all right? Yo, Rob, what's going on at Mackey this year? We looking for like the hottest interfaces. Show me what you got, man. There's a lot new in Mackey. Hold, hold the microphone, baby. All right, all right. There's a lot new in Mackey this year. We're leading the charge with our new DLC creator, XS, our adaptive digital podcasting mixer. Uh, we launched the flagship model of this back in May. DLC Creator XS. The first thing that sets it apart is these control modes from easy to professional. It is an adaptive mixer, so if you, when you first turn it on, it'll teach you how to use it. If you've never done a podcast before, podcasting is very... Everyone's doing a podcast now. Yep. So it'll teach you, you know, set your, set your faders to Unity, plug in your headphones, turn up your headphone volume, plug in your XLR, choose what kind of microphone you're using, talk into your microphone and it'll listen and set your game for you. Totally. Uh, and then there's a very satisfying sort of moment where there's just like, whoa, you hear that all of the compression and settings that go into making a uh, professional quality sounding podcast. So uh, DLC Creator XS still maintains all of the features that DLC Creator have that sets it apart. We have the auto mix, which, you know, if you have multiple guests on the show, it makes it really easy for uh, just like literally auto mixing of levels. And uh, um, trying to think what else um, is in here. Oh, um, and then, yeah, when you go through easy mode all the way to professional, still all of the same functionality. It's a fully capable digital mixer. So when you're in the channel, you have EQ, gate, compressor, DSer. You have sample pads with voice changing effects, pitch shift, disguise, robot voice, all kinds of fun stuff. And uh, yeah, for anyone who's looking to get into podcasting, DLZ Creator has everything you could possibly want. <laughs> And this seems to make it really easy and fun to get into podcasts. And so if you're looking for the, to start your podcast, which you know was your New Year's resolution, DLC Creator, let's get it. Tell me when to go. Tell me when to go. Hey, yo, what up, y'all? Now still ain't over, and it actually keeps getting better. We are in the exclusive Yamaha exhibit today. And if you can see, like, Yamaha literally got their own section. They said forget a booth. Forget a little exhibit. We need a section. You know what I'm talking about? This is the VIP NAM experience. So come join me as we talk with a rep from Yamaha to see all the what's new in Pro Audio. All right. So over here, this is our live streaming section. And I wanted to showcase some of our latest studio monitors, the HS4s and HS3s. They are part of our HS series that are some of the most popular studio monitors on the planet. But what's cool about these is they are uh, a more in a more compact form factor to be 
portable and also more versatile in that they have three different inputs on the back. You have uh, quarter inch XLR combo jacks. You also have uh, RCA as well as uh, auxiliary eighth inch as well. Um, so this is the, uh, the version with a four and a half inch low frequency driver and a one inch high frequency driver that's actually borrowed from the larger and more expensive HS5. And uh, the HS3 has a 3.5 inch low frequency driver and a 0.75 inch high frequency driver. So above all, these sound great. Um, the Yamaha is known for uh, producing true reference quality studio monitors uh, that don't color the sound at all. And uh, we certainly pride ourselves on uh, sonic accuracy and these deliver much like the rest of the HS series. Um, so what's exciting about these as well is uh, they are the most affordable entryway into the HS series. Uh, these will run you uh, $249.99 a pair, and the HS3s are $229.99 a pair. And they both come in black or white models as well. So. Why did Yamaha think it was important to make such a small monitor? We just wanted to make our, our studio monitors and our sonic quality more accessible um, for any type of customer, whether it be someone that's working music production, someone that is doing video editing, um, anybody that wants high quality sound, um, it, that'll fit a smaller space, essentially. Okay. So, Now, today, a big focus of mine has been searching for audio interfaces. And I'm seeing something that I've never so seen before from Yamaha. I don't know if I've been missing out or is this a totally brand new product. Tell me. Yeah, so these are our brand new Steinberg audio interfaces. This is the uh, IXO series. There's two models, the IXO 12 and the IXO 22. Um, the IXO 12 has one mic pre as well as a high Z input for a direct uh, a DI for a guitar. The IXO 22 has two mic pre's as well as it, the, another high Z input for a guitar. Um, what's cool about these as well is there are mute buttons built in directly on the unit. So it's super handy if you're doing any podcasting, live streaming, you can just mute it directly on the interface itself. Um, additionally, there's a, a pair of stereo outs on the back as well. So uh, much like the HS series, these are kind of at a more affordable price point. Um, this will be the easiest way to get into the Steinberg family of interfaces um, with the IXO 12 being $119.99 and the IXO 22 at $169.99. And of course, we're keeping that black and white colorway, which I think is nice, as you can see. Yep. Of course. Thank you, Sean. Yo, behind me right now is a rare piano that Yamaha made exclusive, custom made for Prince. He actually used this on his piano and a microphone tour. You can see the pink piano, man. You ain't never seen it before. It's never been before on display outside of Paisley Park. So this is super dope experience.